Like many RVs, ours came from the factory with awnings already installed. We have one wide awning over both windows on the driver's side, one over the bedroom window on the curb side, one over the door, and of course, our main patio awning. But there are times that we can't, or don't want to, have our main awning out, like on very windy days, when we'd still like to have shade over the right front living room window. It's taken us over nine years to get around to it, but today we're going to install a brand new window awning, and we'll show you exactly how it's done. Before placing our order for a matching A&E Dometic awning, we measured the window to determine what size we'd need. Our window is 48 inches wide, and Dometic recommends adding 6 inches to that to allow 3 inches of overhang on each side. Since we have extra space on both sides of the window and wanted to both increase shade on sunny days and better protect it from raining in if we want to leave the window open on wet days, we added an additional 12 inches for a total of 18. This will give us a generous 9 inches of overhang on each side. We also ordered the fabric and hardware colors to match our original awnings. For this job, we've assembled the following parts and tools. The new awning roller, fabric and arms. The included installation hardware. A roll of putty tape and a pair of scissors. A tape measure. Slot head and Phillips head screwdrivers. A pair of pliers. A Sharpie marker. Our cordless drill, drill bits, and a square head screwdriver bit. Aluminum RVs will also need a pop riveter. A few more items we'll need are a pair of old gym socks, a plastic knife, and some electrical tape. When we open the boxes, we'll find the awning rail, and since ours are Dometic's Elite Series, a metal wrap is included. This matches all our other awnings and prevents billowing on the highway. There's the roller tube and fabric, the arms and the foot covers. There are also instructions, the strap hanger bracket, and a bag full of pan head screws and Oscar rivets. We'll be installing the awning rail with these Robertson screws, which use a square driver. We really like Robertson fasteners and keep three different size bits on hand. On fiberglass RVs, like ours, we'll use Phillips head screws to install the awning arms. On aluminum RVs, the arms are attached with Oscar rivets, which have splits along the shaft to ensure a wide grip. Of course, we'll also need a stepladder. We'll start by measuring the awning rail, confirming that it's the exact length we ordered, 66 inches. We'll then make a small mark at the exact center with the Sharpie. To determine the correct position of the awning rail above the window frame, measure the diameter of the fabric roller tube assembly. We can see here that it's about 3 inches. Using that diameter, we measure 3 inches above the window frame and use our Sharpie to mark the spot in at least 3 or 4 places along the window. We then confirm the width of the window, which you'll recall is 48 inches, and mark the exact center, in this case 24 inches, the same 3 inches above the frame. We'll be lining this mark up with the mark we made in the center of the awning rail, which will then center it above the window. Unroll some of the putty tape and apply it to the back of the awning rail, pressing it into place along the entire length. It will adhere with light pressure. Cut the tape even with the end of the rail, then peel the backing paper off the putty. Carefully place the lower edge of the awning rail along the marks you made above the window and press the rail against the RV. Be sure to line up the center mark on the rail with the center mark above the window. The putty will hold it in place for now until you install the screws. Wrap a 1 16 inch drill bit with several wraps of electrical tape, leaving about 1 half inch of the drill bit exposed. The tape will act as a guide to prevent you from drilling deeper than necessary into the wall of the RV. After confirming the center sharpie marks are perfectly aligned and the rail is straight along the other marks, drill the center hole first, only drilling until the bit goes through 
or until your electrical tape guide touches the side of the RV. Install the center screw and check one last time to be sure the bottom of the rail runs perfectly straight along the marks you made above the window frame. Now you can drill and install the rest of the screws. Our awning rail is up, but tightening the screws squeezes some of the putty out from under it. This squishing into place is what makes the installation waterproof. A quick slice with a plastic disposable knife makes cleaning off the excess putty a breeze with no danger of scratching the paint. Our rail is perfectly centered and straight, three inches above the window frame with nine inches sticking out each side. Using our flat blade screwdriver, we'll gently spread one end of the rail just a small amount making it easy to slide the awning in. Using the supplied screw and a Phillips head screwdriver, attach one of the arms to one end of the roller tube assembly. Then do the same thing on the other side. To be sure we don't scratch the RV's paint during the next step, we cover each of the arms with an old athletic sock. We admit this is probably overcautious, but we figure better safe than sorry. The instructions suggest unrolling the fabric, or the metal wrap on Elite models, one full turn. Unrolling it too far will leave the spring without enough tension to hold the awning tightly closed, so we prefer to keep everything wrapped as much as possible, only unrolling it as much as absolutely necessary. Now slide the entire assembly into the awning rail from the side where you spread the opening with your screwdriver. With the arms slightly swung outward, the awning slides easily into the track without unrolling it an additional turn. Using your tape measure on each end, center the roller in the rail. To get each foot bracket positioned correctly, we'll be pushing the arms upward to line up the top of the roller tube with the center of the awning rail track. Before we can attach our feet, we'll of course need to remove our socks. Double check to be sure that the arms are square with the windows. Holding each arm square to the window and upward so that the top of the roller tube is even with the awning rail track. Mark the side of the RV through the lower hole on the foot bracket. This is where a helper comes in handy to make sure everything is lined up properly before making your mark. Measure the distance between the mounting holes in the foot brackets. Ours are exactly 1 and 5 8 inches on center. Now make another mark exactly that distance directly above the lower mark on each side of the window. For RVs with fiberglass walls like ours, use a 1 8 inch drill bit and the same electrical tape trick to drill pilot holes for the Phillips head mounting screws. For aluminum walled RVs, you'll be using the Oscar rivets and a pop rivet gun instead drilling the appropriate size hole for them first. Drill slowly and carefully so that you can stop as soon as you're through without going any deeper than needed into the wall. Apply a piece of putty tape on the back of the brackets over each hole and remove the backing paper. Install a Phillips head screw through the lower mounting hole on each bracket. Now we can straighten and remove the locking cotter pins at each end. Again, you'll notice that the top of the roller tube is even with the center of the awning rail track. Pull down on the strap to fully extend the awning and install the remaining Phillips head screw in each of the foot brackets. As before, any putty tape that squeezes out can be sliced off with your plastic knife. Push both foot covers on to clip them into place. Pull the strap to completely extend the awning. Insert the strap hanger bracket through the top loop of the strap and position it against the side of the RV. Make sure the strap is centered in the roller tube and is aiming straight down. Mark one of the holes, retract the awning, and then mark the second hole, 
using the first mark and the bracket as a guide. Again, you'll be using screws for solid fiberglass walls and Oscar rivets for aluminum walls, so use the corresponding drill bit. Apply putty tape to the back of the bracket and screw or rivet it into the wall of the RV. Again, use your plastic knife to remove excess putty. After reconfirming that the roller tube is centered in the track, install the included self-drilling screws to hold it in place. Come straight in from the top. No pre-drilling is required. Installing the screws tightly pressed against the ends of the metal wrap or fabric will hold it firmly in place. And that's it! Our beautiful new awning is in place. We're also excited to announce our completely redesigned, newly launched website. How to RV Geeks is now thervgeeks.com, our video blog, where you can connect with us and subscribe to hear about our newest video tips as soon as they're released. Don't worry if you're already subscribed to our old website. You're still on our mailing list. Just be aware that your newsletters will now be coming from thervgeeks.com from now on. Thanks so much for watching. If you missed our previous video about avoiding sewer odors when the gray valve is open, you can watch it here. And if you enjoy our videos, please be sure to give them a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.